In this episode, I'm going to take some customer 3D designs that I got, get them ready for injection molding, and design the injection mold. Welcome to another episode. Hi, my name is John, and in this episode, what I'm going to do is take some files that I got from a customer that he designed in AutoCAD 3D and get them ready for injection molding. And then I'm also going to design the injection mold itself. I'm designing this injection mold for one of my smaller desktop machines, which is a good machine for manual injection molds. That means I have to take the mold out of the machine and then separate the two halves with screwdrivers and then pry the part out. One of the challenges always with these small manual molds is whether or not I'm going to be able to get the part out of the mold. We won't find out until next time in the next episode where I make the mold and then actually make the parts and find out. If I'm not able to get the parts out of the mold, I do have some ideas about how to modify the mold to create an ejection mechanism that will work just fine with the, the manual mold. Anyway, let me uh, take you to the computer. I'll show you the parts that I got from Michael and then the process I took to get them ready for injection molding and then designing the mold. From Michael, I got an Autodesk file and the first thing I did was import that file into Fusion 360. Here is the result. You can see he has all the different pieces in a single file. Some of the pieces are exact copies of each other. So these two pieces, I think, are uh, exactly the same or they're a mirror of each other. Um, actually, they're a mirror of each other. But these parts here, this one is exactly the same as this one because they're symmetric around one axis. So when I got the file, it was a set of bodies. And the first thing I did is I took some of these bodies and converted them to components. So I said create components from bodies. And that gave me these pieces down here. Now, I, two of the pieces are the ones that I want to initially turn into injection molds. He would like these other pieces injection molded at some point, but for now I'm probably going to laser cut them because it's going to be faster and cheaper to laser cut them than it will be to create another mold for him. Anyway, once I had these parts, let me isolate one of them. And I'll show you what I'm dealing with next, which is that these are not really designed to be easy to injection mold for several reasons. One is that they have no draft. All of these surfaces are straight up and down. Another is that we have sharp corners. These can be done with an EDM machine or in some other ways, but on a milling machine, these need to be rounded off. The smallest cutter that I wanted to use was 1 32nd of an inch. So that means I need a radius of 164th an inch at the most. Another thing is there are some pretty sharp pieces here. So I checked with him on all of these things and he said, yeah, it was okay to make changes. So the next thing that I did is I said export and I saved these as separate Fusion 3D files. So I'll go over here and show you that. Here you can see I've got uh, one of the files right here. And if I open that file, this is the version that I have made ready for injection molding. And what I'll do is uh, I'll take you through the process of getting this ready. Okay, let's roll back. And again, this is where I started. No draft, no rounded corners, etc. The first thing I did is, if you look here, I made some changes to the thickness of the part. I did a push-pull and I moved these surfaces out on both sides here and here. And the reason I did that is because uh, once I add draft, these will become a little bit thin. Next step is again pulling the top out even more. The reason for doing that is I'm going to set the parting line to right here. So when I add draft, this is going to become smaller than this section here. Again, same thing on the other side, pull this out. And then here what I'm doing, if you look, is um, I basically took this section here 
selected and said extrude, like so, which I will show you the results of. And that's basically to get rid of the extra edge that was there on both sides. Uh, if you scroll back, if I scroll back, you can see I've got this edge and now it's gone. All right, next thing that I did, let's take a look at that, is the same thing down here. So you can see that there's a little bit of an edge there. Again, selected it on both sides and got rid of that. The next thing is over on this end, uh, what I discovered is that again with draft, this distance here became a little too small. I wanted to keep the smallest end mill down to 1 32nd of an, inch, of an inch, mainly so that I had enough depth, um, enough, enough length of cut on the end mill. So I pulled this surface out a little bit as well. And then I created a parting line. You can see the parting line right here, and I'll show you how I did that. So I'll go ahead and say split body, and the body I want to split is this right here. And then the splitting tool is going to be right here. And I have this set to extend, and setting it to extend will create the cut lines as you see there. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I've already got it uh, in here. All right, so now you can see that we've got the split line added along these edges here. Then it's time to add some draft. So I added draft to the bottoms, as you can see here. Uh, this is no longer vertical, these surfaces, and this surface here is no longer vertical. Let me show you the side. So the amount of draft that I added is 3 degrees, because I figured it would make it easier to get it out of the mold. I didn't want to go less than 3 degrees. Then I added draft to the, the top, and you can see these all have angles now, and this has an angle now. And if we look at the side, or the edge, you can see we've got drafts in all the places where we want it to be. We don't have draft in here yet, which I think is the next thing. So I added draft to this hole as well as to these pinholes there. Then I rounded these corners to show what it would look like when I had a minimum of 1 32nd inch diameter cutter rounded these edges, and then the next thing I think is rounding these edges here. So again, I'll show you going back, and there we go. Now, I don't have to round these edges in here because, you know, it's not going to be a problem with uh, cutting it because I'll be cutting away this material here in the injection mold. So the cutter can easily go around this tight corner or straight corner, but in here we need the radius for the cutter itself. All right, let's see what's next. All right, what's next is on this side. Let me show you the before. So we've got all of these things right here, and deta these details, if I zoom in, you can see it's 14 thousandths of an inch. So that means I would need a really tiny cutter, plus is, uh, is at an angle. So this is not something I can mill with end mills. Again, this is something where I'd probably have to use an EDM, which I don't own. So I rounded those off, and Michael said that would be fine. And then the last thing is I rounded all of these corners here, which, again, will be a result of using the end mill. What I just showed you is how I should have done this part. But for some reason, I did this part in the same file as the mold. Um, what would have made more sense is to take the part to which I had a draft and corners and everything else and import it into a new file where I would create the mold, but I didn't. So once I had this part all set up, you can see this is the one that has the pins on both sides. Then I created a sketch for the mold itself. Uh, which I will show, show you. So this is going to become the core. And then I did the same thing for the cavity. And the part is gone because it's sandwiched in between the two. But at this point, I haven't cut anything away. So this is where now what I did is I used the modify combine 
to cut the the body away from the the core and the cavity then i started to work on adding the runner system let me show you the other side okay so this is going to become the gate and then what i did is i added the beginning of the runner and then i added a ball cap to the end so when i subtract this from this part here i'll get the runner that feeds into the mold i also added some alignment pins these are actually quarter inch dowel pins and one of the things that you'll see uh, when i make this mold is that i didn't provide any clearance on these to allow for a slide fit so if you have quarter inch dowel pins into a quarter inch hole chances are it's going to be too tight to really slip in easily and then what i did is i subtract uh no what what did i do oh yeah so in the the other side in the cavity the core i subtracted the runner from that and then i did the same thing subtracting it from the cavity as you can see here uh, so I pretty much have most of what I need at this point to be able to make the mold. But to make the parts, there are a couple more details I want. The first thing is I wanted to add these cutouts here. These are for a screwdriver, so I can wedge the two halves of the molds apart. This is going to be a manual mold, which means there's uh, I take it out of the machine and then pry it apart and then take the part out. I also needed to add some vents. So these are vents, basically the, the plastic is going to come in here and push out to the sides and it's going to be pushing the air in front of it. So these are vents that are very, very thin, three thousandths of an inch, uh, which is wide enough for the air to get through, but not wide enough for the plastic to get through, or I should say deep enough. And then I have this channel here, which is plenty deep for the air to escape out uh, to the side. Um, so that's the mold, pretty much one half of the mold, uh, well, both halves of the mold, ready to create the cam and then mill. Now let's take a look at the cam for this. Uh, the cam took me longer than I expected because uh, there's a lot more going on than I thought there would be. So let's start with the, the cavity. Well, actually, let me uh, start with the first thing that I did. So the first thing I did is I wanted to face the top surface off. When I get the aluminum, it's not completely flat. So I want to use a three inch cutter to basically give me a fairly flat surface. I'm using a three eighths inch cutter because that's the largest cutter that I can easily use in my machine. I do have a one inch face mill, but I need to get a pull stud for that uh, before I can start to use it. So for that, what I did is I set the um, material. Oh, actually, I did the, the facing on this side. And the reason I did the facing on this side is so that it wouldn't know about any of these. And, you know, when you're setting this up, it doesn't really matter because I set the coordinate back here and I set the distance here. If we take a look at the setup so that there was uh, 20 thousandths on the top. And then I gave myself an additional 40 thousandths on the sides just to make sure I cleaned everything up. So as I mentioned, I set the coordinate back to here because I like to use the back left coordinate. And then I just told it to do a parallel cutting of the whole thing. The cavity was a little bit more work, um, but not too bad. So this is a pocketing operation, another pocketing operation. And then I did a ramp for the pinholes, and this is using a 3 16th inch diameter cutter. I think uh, all of these are, yes, it's T3. And uh, that was a pretty easy way to do this. Now, one of the things that I think I mentioned before is that I didn't leave any extra room here, so I had these cut to exactly 0.25 of, uh, inches. And uh, as you'll see later, that was a little bit too tight. So for the second half of the mold, I actually adjusted this to include an extra 50 thousandths of an inch. And that made a, a huge difference, uh, as you'll see later on. Then this is uh, finishing up the, the floor. So if we look at the pocketing operation here, 
I left. Um, here we go. So I left. I had stock to leave, of leaving twenty thousands on the the sides and the bottom, and so this right here is cleaning up the bottom, and then this is uh, cleaning up the sides. Now I have a number of steps here because the sides are at an angle. It's a has draft. So if you take a look at this, um, you can see that I set the sorry here the maximum step down to be just five thousandths of an inch to give me a better draft. You know, I may want have wanted to, I probably should have set this to be a little bit less, but that's what I used. Slotting, uh, this is, let's see what size, one eighth inch end mill. This is for the, the air here. And then the contour is for again for the air vents, but this is the one. These are the ones that are only five thousandths, three thousandths of an inch deep. And then I switch to an even smaller cutter, which is the one sixteenth inch diameter cutter, to cut the pin holes. Uh, these are these are holes that will produce pins in the final part. And then producing this rectangular pin. And then I switched to the ball end mill, one eighth inch ball end mill, to cut the runner, and then a final bit of cutting with a one thirty second inch flat end mill for the gate. So that all went pretty well. The other side, there's one aspect that took a little bit longer. So let me show that one. And that is uh, doing this whole section here, because uh, this is pretty fine detail. So. Again, the ramping from before, I just copied these sections here, and then this is where it got tricky. So I tried uh, adaptive and various other strategies and finally managed to get uh, pocket working. But again, one of the things that I had to do is change the, the minimum step down. Uh, sorry, not step over. Um, the maximum roughing step down to be eight thousandths of an inch. And this is also leaving five thousandths on the sides and the top. So that got rid of a lot of the material. Uh, then I wanted to get rid of uh, some more material down here in the valleys. Uh, these are both using, this was done using a flat end mill, and then I switched to a 132nd inch ball end mill. And so I just wanted to make sure I got more of the material before I did the finishing passes. And then I did a finishing pass here, which is contours going all the way along like so. And then I did a parallel pass like this to make sure that I got rid of some of the, the artifacts. And I'll show you what I mean by those artifacts. So I'll go ahead and simulate this. Okay, so here you can see I've got, um, whoops, uh, quite a few artifacts. And then when I clean them up with a contour, this is interesting because um, when I'm backing up, I'm apparently blocking the light and fusion. It's kind of odd. Anyway, there's some. There are a few artifacts going this way. So when I do the the parallel operation, like so, um, it cleans those up. Let me go back one operation. Okay, you can see these lines here, and then I'll go forward one operation. And I'm uh, not sure what it's doing here. It's having some issues with uh, drawing it completely. Anyway, before I was able to see some artifacts, oh, here you go. So you can see there's still some uh, cusping. Um, but in the injection molded part, you really don't see those. So it's, it's good enough. As I mentioned in the next episode, I'll be creating the mold and then injecting the parts to see how it turns out. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and comment below. All of these things help me grow my channel. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.